there, my friends. It's me once again, and welcome to Pearl English. We'll start off with grammar, and today we look at articles. Articles are among the most commonly used words in the English language. You will see them in every sentence that you hear or read. They are actually very small words, but they can cause big problems if you use them wrongly. There are two types of articles. There are the indefinite articles and the definite articles. Let's get to know them, okay? The indefinite article A will become AND when it is placed before words that begin with a vowel sound made by the letters A, E, I, O and U. The is a definite article. It lives up to its name because it points to or indicates things that are, well, definite or certain. Here's some of the do's and don'ts of using the indefinite article. Use a or an before the name of a single thing that can be counted. For example, a teacher, a hippopotamus, a planet, an engineer, an igloo, an iguana. Do not use a or an before a plural noun. Do not use a or an before the name of a thing that cannot be counted. We cannot say a sand, a water, an advice or an ice because these things are uncountable nouns. We could however use words like some, a lot of and plenty. Use and before words that start with the silent H. These are nouns like our, an air, and the adjective honest. So we say an hour, an air, and an honest. Mm, person. Do not use and before a word that begins with a vowel that makes a U sound. Examples of this will include a university, a user-friendly device, and a European. Use a or an before an adjective that modifies a singular noun. Here are two examples. This is such a peaceful place. My father bought me an expensive mobile phone. In the second example, we use and because the adjective expensive begins with a vowel sound. Let's move on to the definite article the. We use the with both countable and uncountable nouns. Remember the words sand, water, advice and ice that I showed you earlier on? I told you that you cannot use them with a, uh, and, an. Well, you can use them with the, as in the sand, the water, the advice, and the ice. However, you must remember that when the word that follows the begins with a vowel, we pronounce it as the. Do not use the with plural nouns if they refer to the whole group or species of something. The gorillas are very strong and fierce mammals. This is not correct. You do not read the article the. 
The correct way to do it is like this. Gorillas are very strong and fierce mammals. Use the when it is known exactly which person or thing you are talking about. The girl who is speaking uses the because her friend knows exactly which man she is referring to. Use the to refer to something for the second time. Here is an example of what I mean. A man and his son went jogging in the park. Suddenly, the man slipped and fell. Here we see how at first mention, we say a man. And when we talk about him for the second time, we use the man. Gosh, there are so many uses for the article the. I'll just tell you about one more of its uses. Okay. You have to use the when you talk about something of which there is only one of its kind in the world. This can be man-made constructions or universal truths about the wonders of nature. The sun shines brightly in the sky every day. The Petronas Twin Towers are situated in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. Let's learn some abbreviations and acronyms. An abbreviation is a shortened form of a word or phrase. And what's an acronym? Well, it's also an abbreviation formed from the initial letters of other words and can be read or pronounced as one word. Here are some common abbreviations. Advertisement can be shortened to advert. It can also be abbreviated to ads. The word department also has a shortened form. That is D E P T. Here are some common acronyms. Ever heard of DIY? It's the acronym for Do It Yourself. It is the activity of building or putting things together on your own. It's actually become a very common trend nowadays. The word scuba is actually an acronym too. But it has taken on a generic form and become a regular word in a dictionary. For your information, FYI, SCUBA stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. Here are a few more acronyms and their meanings. SWAT, Special Weapons and Tactics. Q&A, Questions and Answers. ATM, Automated Teller Machine. DVD, Digital Video Disc. Today, we look at a poem. A poem is a piece of writing that is so full of expressions of feelings and ideas. A poem usually has its own unique rhythm and imagery. Poems are usually arranged in a series of lines that can be separated into groups called stanzas. The poem that we are going to read today is called A Fighter's Lines by Mazuki Ali. Listen to it. A Fighter's Lines I am old and worn and have lost all my strength sufferings. And the history of the fight for independence have forced sacrifices that know no name or life. From the wheelchair of the rest of my days, I, body and energy, crushed sea and cannot do much. These times are too big a challenge for the remnants of my crippled years. The net of deceit spread everywhere disturbs me. In the name of justice, wake up and form ranks, sons of our ancestor. Be brave and erect the wall of people. Stand up, heirs of our freedom. I have no more voice. It is you now who should speak. Wow, that is so patriotic. What a great poem, so inspirational. Hmm, let's go on and look at the synopsis of the poem. It's about a soldier who fought for the independence of the country many, many years ago. He is now an old man who is weak and frail. He's unable to walk and moves around with the help of a wheelchair. 
we can see that he's still very patriotic despite his physical limitations and is worried about the future of his country. The poet, who is also the persona, is concerned about the injustices that he sees, which he refers to as the net of deceit. His is a wake-up call to the younger generation to stand up for freedom and justice and truth. He exhorts them to be brave and loyal in order to preserve what he and his veteran comrades had fought for in the days gone by. Well, that was just the synopsis. Do read the poem and try to digest it. We'll talk some more about it in the next episode, okay? Take care and see you soon. Bye!